Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use a HTTP request in Power Automate. Essentially, how to get APIs working in Power Automate. It's very straightforward once you know how, so let's get right into it. And as I do get into this, if it's useful and helpful, hit that like button for me, subscribe so you don't miss any more hints and tips when it comes to various different pieces of software like Power Automate. So to do this, it's actually quite straightforward, um, but it is going to require a premium license, okay? So it's a paid for license, it's the only way to access this. So if it's not what you're looking for, yeah, feel free to click away. But ultimately, if you have a paid for license or an employer who's willing to pay for a license for you to do this, then I'm going to show you how it is quite straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on create a new flow. Uh, we're just going to make this one an instant flow. Just like a push button because, you know, it's just going to be a simple process, but you can make this as automated as you want. Um, and I'm just going to go and call it HTTP request. Okay, uh, it's a manual trigger and we'll just create it. Okay, so with this uh, old uh, or new designer, I'm not a big fan of it. So I turn that off and turn it into the kind of classic view because uh, I just find it a little bit easier to use. So we have a manual trigger here, but this can of course be triggered from lots of different things. So you could have a scheduled event where you want, if you want to kind of gather API based data via HTTP, you can do that every hour, every 60 seconds if you wanted to, right? Obviously there's going to be a certain amount of demand and certain amount of, of kind of uh, processes that you can do a day using Power Automate. I think it's around 20 to 40,000 uh, actions. So every single step that you have is an action. So any loops that you have could be problematic. So try to keep that in mind. Um, but once you kind of have a license and you kind of have your automation set up, whether it's kind of on a scheduled flow, a manual flow, whether you want to email, trigger something, you can do all that. Once you've done all that, the next thing you want to do is you want to search for HTTP. Okay, that is going to give you all of these different options right here. The ones that we want are these ones that say premium on them. Okay, now what we want is you've got a couple of different things. You've got HTTP webhook, but that's not really what this video is going to be about. Um, but that is quite useful if you're going to be creating something to listen uh, for an event, in which case, you know, you want to be using a HTTP webhook. Um, but we're just going to focus on HTTP, not the plus swagger, but just the HTTP. Give that a click and it's going to load up this information right here. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to get information. So we're going to get, uh, there's posting information, which is when you want to send something back or you want to delete information that's held in a database via an API. You can do that. You can patch things and you can do all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, we're just going to use a get function here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some free public APIs for the tutorial. Uh, so we've got a couple of different things um, we can use. I'm going to use this one right here, which is Coindesk, just Bitcoin's price index um, in real time. So I'm just going to copy that using control C. We're going to come on over here and we're going to paste that URL uh, into there. Okay. Now, of course, there's other things that you could do depending on the type of API that you have. You will have headers, whether you need to authenticate, whether you need to send an API key into the header, whether or not you need to have a body, uh, you know, for filtering the API information. All of that can be held there and it will be contained within your API documentation. Okay. Now, this particular example, it's quite straightforward. You can see this URL is actually broken down into its kind of filtered components, right? So we can see right here, this is just a test API from coindesk.com v1 and it's Bitcoin's price index, so BPI, and it's the current price.json. And that's all it's going to filter. Now, it could just be that actually this is a different um, set of filters. Um, and of course, you can add filters directly into the URI as well. So just bear that in mind to check your API documentation. They will hold all this information, whether it's a header information, whether it's a body piece of information, queries that need to be added, and all that kind of stuff. Once you're happy with this and you're using the correct method, you've got all the information required and of course the authentication process um, down and go ahead and click save on that and then we can test it okay and it should bring back bitcoin's price index so i'm just going to manually trigger this test it quite a few buttons here to test it when you're actually running this thing manually um, and then we're done with that and it should actually come up and load now it says here that the name uh the provided name uh, you know api.coindesk.com could not be resolved. So there's actually a problem with this URI um, or URL essentially. So let's go ahead and come back to our public APIs, probably not up to date um, here. So, you know, it's got this. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe we'll use this one instead and get some cat facts. Uh, so we'll switch up our API a little bit. Just come in here 
and we'll go ahead and do that. So things can change, and that's the thing with APIs, there's lots of different versions usually, um, and so as time progresses, APIs change. Uh, in the case here of um, this Coindesk one, I imagine maybe they've gone from a V1 to a V2, and maybe they've also you know, changed how you actually call this information. Um, so probably worth checking that. Now with this one here, we're gonna get uh, cat.ninja uh, slash fax. We'll save that in, and we'll give this a test and see whether or not this one will actually pull back any data or cat related facts. We'll go run the flow, we'll click done, and there we go, we have successfully run it. And in here, we can do is we can now see, you know, the output here. Okay, so researchers believe the word tabby comes from the Abita, a neighborhood in Baghdad, Iraq, and the tabbies got their name because of their striped coats resembling the famous wavy patterns in. Uh, is in uh, silk produced in the city. So you can see how we have an output then from our API, a random kind of cat fact for you. So like I say, it's quite straightforward um, to go ahead and actually create a HTTP request uh, and basically get information. You could also push information. You could delete, depending on if like it's your own API and you're looking at Power Automate to take information from certain areas and push it into a database or to you know alter and amend and update data. You can do all of that via HTTP. But of course, it is a premium function. You are going to have to have a premium license to be able to use this one. If you found this video useful, informative, smash the like button. If you're new, subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next one.